Okay, so this is the Finance Committee. I'd like to call the meeting to order. It's uh, 3.43 p.m. Wednesday, December 18th. I move that we adopt the minutes of November 21st as printed. Can I get a second? Yeah, my second. Okay, I have some, to read those. I have some uh, things I'd like to discuss on the minutes. Okay, go. Um, page one where it says, Jim Baker wants to know what the return to the school district would be on rentals. I think that was actually uh, Jamie's statement. So that should say, Jamie Fitzpatrick wants to know what the return to the school district would be on rentals. Um, and then it says, Jim Baker would like an updated auditorium upgrade plan. I think everybody on the committee wanted that. Yes. So I think that should say the committee would like an updated auditorium upgrade plan. And then on page two, where Mr. Ficker's speaking about buying uh, used equipment. I think that needs to be clarified that they buy, uh, when feasible, we do not buy brand new technology, but rather purchase older, refurbished older. technology. So I get that clarification. And then the very last sentence, I'd like to strike at this point and just say, Bob replaces Chromebooks at the elementary and middle schools as they break. I mean, that's been the way it's been ever since I've been on the school board. It's not something new. They replace the Chromebooks as they break, rather than at this point. That's it. Okay. I don't know who's going to go first. Me either. I'll ask Chris and then Jamie. Okay, thank you. So, um, it's a motion as amended? To approve as amended. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, open items. I know, Jamie, you've got a lot of open items. Where are you with, with those? Uh, not since some in. There's still a number you know, uh, that are open. The, the one that has been sticking in my craw that we talked about. Receipts. I did get some receipts in. Um, I'm just going to check those against the um, the coding on them. Uh, I thought that they were coded to travel expenses. They backups were courses, and they should probably be coded to courses. But they might be coded to courses already. There's a coding on the receipt. I just got to check. I just got to validate that. Yeah, but I'm still missing the the manifest 13 receipts. On that same individual. Yes. Um, I, I don't know if you have those available or not. I haven't. They were, they were on my desk for today to get through Manifest 13. I hadn't had an opportunity to do that. Okay. Okay. Um, I was going to do my narr my normal narrative, answer your questions. I only did uh, Manifest 14 today because it's the most recent. Um, now that the budget is completed, I now have a lot more time that I can steer towards. What is your, what is your schedule for the holiday? My schedule for the holidays? Yeah. Um, what, what time are you out in between like school ends until school comes back in January? Or no, 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 no. Right? I'm here until the day before Christmas. I was going to take Thursday and Friday off. And then um, uh, Monday and Tuesday of the following week was kind of up in the air, really depending upon what's going on. Yep. Um, I can't be here on January 2nd, but then that's it. Because I'm going to be able to get some some activities done during that. Uh, I get some time off in there too that allow me to. Okay. So why probably we coordinate these things and try to take the ones that you've given some answers on and which ones I still find need yeah. open and okay. you know, see if we can't uh, consolidate that down with the hopes of coming in out of January finance meeting. Um, we pull you on those. Cool. Okay. All right. Then I will I will carve out lots of time. May I be as good as you think? There's still quite a few. Yeah, but, <laughs> well, I have it open till the ninth one, back to the ninth yeah. one. He, he's got, um, not only does he have the 13 outstanding, he's got uh, two other uh, Word documents that are um, that are still open. That I was only able to partially answer some of his questions. Right. Correct. Yeah, I have them back open right the ninth, manifest number nine. But I haven't, I haven't, Synchronize a few of the responses yet. That's what I'm missing. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't delete them until they're all that stuff. Yeah, so they, there's there's probably 
eight to ten pages would be my guess. So we're yeah, still out some somewhere in that yeah somewhere in that neighborhood. Yep. Yeah. That MS twenty five we don't need to hold on to because then that's what goes into the state, correct? It will have yeah. that in the annual report. Um, it will be. Um, but I, I believe you approved or the school board approved the MS twenty five back in September. They did. Yeah. They did, but you, I didn't print it out or anything. I'm assuming it's going to be the annual report. Yeah. Yeah. If you need another copy, I will send it to you. Just ask. Okay, because I have one. It's thirty one pages. I didn't want to print it out. Okay, I'll, I'll make sure you get a paper copy. I, I can wait to the end of the report, really. Okay. I don't know what your time in that. Because I keep it in here, I, and I can refer it if I need to. Yeah. But I like, I, I'm still old fashioned if I like paper stuff, too. Okay. Okay, so I had a couple of things from Manifest 14 that Matt responded to. One was the, um, the uh, drum. Versa drum variety pack for $3,700. Uh, and I asked if we get special pricing from the preferred vendor or if this is just something that we purchase. Um, and the response is that the, uh, this is the major vendor in New Hampshire. Um, and while we don't get special pricing, the feeling is they get special service. I'm just wondering, in a future meeting, if you can tell us about what the total budget is for, or actual expenses are for about a year on, on band equipment. Yep. And um, now they may be the largest vendor and they also repair. Yes. So that's important. Yes. But depending on the amount of money, it would seem to me we should be getting some sort of discount of some kind, mm -hmm. um, if it's a lot of money. If it's not a lot of money, then it's not an issue. Um, I will try to um, dredge up the emails that I've done recently. Okay. Because I tried to um, have them go and uh, competitively cost out um, a piece of equipment, I mean, yep. a, an actual instrument. And it came back that, uh, you know, we would have saved, I, I, I don't have a number off the top of my head. We would have saved some money, but we would have had to have shipped the equipment from across the country, mm -hmm. and I couldn't guarantee the, the level. It, it's like different grades. You have like uh, student grade all the way up through professional grade, okay? And, um, but you, you'll see those emails. Well, I guess my question is, is this vendor doing business with 100% of the schools in New Hampshire? Because that would be hard to believe if there are other vendors who are. It's also most of them. Right. See, okay. um, how long have you? Okay, New Hampshire. Let me give you a little bit of history because I actually know a lot of the history of this particular company. Okay, okay. Um, it used to be called Ted Herberts, which is right downtown yep. Manchester, yep. and they used to lease all the equipment. Um, they used to be like the number one uh, company in New Hampshire. And um, they were bought out by Music and Arts, and and so now they're still number one. But there are other vendors now starting to come in and take over that business. Okay. Because Music and Arts is not as competitive as Ted Herberts used to be. Okay. Right. Um, it was a big name. Yeah, I bought something from a mandolin from my father from them. Right? Yeah. So you remember? You, you probably met Ted. Yeah, it was mid, it was mid, middle eighties maybe. Yes, you met Ted. Yeah. You know, he's a, he's a big band guy. Yeah. I got to see him play when he was young. Yeah, it was cool. Anyway. So you're, this is something you're working on? It is. Okay. But I will, I will share with uh, the Finance Committee my emails um, regarding uh, music, instruments, and uh, sax purchase. Um, also, I asked about $20,000 for the winter middle and high school sports. That's right, that's yeah. what the question was. So. Yeah. And I see here that it's for officials, and that's, that's what my response was, and apparently the officials need to get paid the day that they, they work, COD. Yes. Cash on delivery. That's right. Okay, uh, so appreciate that explanation. I have a question about that. We're not sitting around with twenty thousand dollars in cash somewhere that people are drawing from. No, they, 
no, it is just, right? No, there is there is a separate bank account that's managed by the high school. And that bank account, the principal can draw money off and pay for the, those officials on the spot. They have to provide me with all the documentation, which they do on a monthly basis, of what they pay out and a reconciliation. It's all recorded in our accounting system as it's occurring as well. Okay, so uh, we're keeping um, we keep that. Every school district in New Hampshire does it like I've that. I've never seen a school district do it differently. It is well. It was one wild. payment for four thousand dollars. Is that that's not on the day? Or is that just a transfer into the account that it gets paid from? It, this is just a transfer into the account. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So then it gets dispersed the day that it gets paid from that account. Yeah. So in a particular day, you might see like like ten or twenty different checks, and they're all ranging between twenty dollars, fifty dollars, maybe a hundred dollars um, for that whole day. Yeah. So you, you said that. <clears throat> It's all received. So the with the the ref will actually write a receipt out and give you a receipt. Yeah, there's your, like a time sheet for the two hundred bucks you gave me. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah, kind of. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I think it's more like a timesheet. By by, so like the person and they who's, get paid then they so they finish the game. They are handed the check. Jesus, you know. But it's a check, not cash. That's right. Okay, that's good. Yes, I, I prefer that. <laughs> and it's all recorded in our accounting system yeah. in, in great detail. Who, who determines the system? N N H I A A or some sort of thing like that? I've I've done this in multiple states and it's, it's all the same. It's all the same. I personally don't like it, but this is the way the culture is in this area. Anything else on business? Yeah, so do you want to go over your questions? I was just going to go 14, yeah. Since we're, we, we started on 14, we can wrap up 14 and put it out in the day. Okay. Um, so I did make note of, uh, we're still seeing the description in the, the description being nothing more than the vendor name. It does provide us with the sufficient information. Um, we, we've talked about that a number of times, so we just need to reiterate that to the office mm -hmm. folks. Uh, because Actually, and I have done that to do that. I also had questions on the $3,500 for the canvas covering for the uh, Bakey uh, the wall. school wall. Uh, and my question was, can you confirm this is grant money that covered this? Because that was our understanding from the school board. There was another meeting at the school board where we brought in the athletics director because this particular cost exceeded that. Right, and then Tom said in the meeting that and the grant the grantor had agreed to cover that additional cost. Right. And not approve the receipt of the donation. Correct. Mm -hmm. so that's when I asked for can I see where the proceeds came in? I don't think it felt that way. Yeah. It's in the notes. It's in the notes. Yeah, it we is. did vote on we did say that we had we had to pay for it. Okay, let me then go find that. Yeah, there was okay, a vote to approve the donation. Of the <laughs> I see that. There was, yeah. right? But there was an amount that exceeded that. And no, no, this is a separate vote. There was a vote for the initial donation, 5000 or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. But then there was a, a couple of weeks later, there was a presentation on the additional donation for the, the, for the cover. The cover, though, specifically for yeah. the cover. No, I'll, get, I'll go into more detail on that. Let okay. me put it down on my to-do list. Mm -hmm. All three of us are remembering it that, that way. That's fine. Because we didn't want to, uh, we didn't want to take it, take the well, law unless yeah. the whole thing was paid for. That would be yeah, I'm, I'm not going to argue. No, 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 this no, no, is, no, no. This no. issue, I think it's important for me to make sure that I get the facts right. So. Right. No, no, I, I get that. So hopefully the money has been received. It's just sitting somewhere. Yeah, um, there's there's a little bit of culture that I'm trying to change. I'm trying to make it so that all grants run through Fund 22. And what you'll find is is that it wasn't consistently done that way in, in the past, okay? So I think this may have been the change over. Um, so what you're saying is that it should, that you have a fund set up so that all grant money goes in and out of there. 
Yes, that's right. And then I can say for absolute certainty that. Exactly. It's in there, and now you're looking at it and taking it out. And now, you know, three of you remember something, and, and I can't verify it because it's not within that fund. Correct. So. Got it. Got it. No, it's a good way to do it. So that was within the last couple of school board meetings, wasn't it? It was. Right. It was two. My belief would be it would have been in October. 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 Yeah. Said October, not November. Yeah, that, yeah, I'm checking my notes here. Maybe I can actually find the spot. Anything else on oh, yeah. past questions? So I, uh, I, I asked, still, okay. Yeah, I had asked questions on uh, legal services. There were some billings for legal services for $16,357.94. Uh, Matt pointed out that one of them was in, uh, uh, for uh, some IEP work, and the balance was for uh, a couple of investigations related to some public discussions that we've had. Um, so I knew we couldn't get into the details, so I just said, you know, right. I can you give me general. This is one of my, I'll to be honest, this is one of my bugaboos. I hate paying lawyers, but it's a necessary evil. Yes. So if we're going to pay them, I want to know if it's special ed, negotiations, a potential lawsuit, employee problem. Either either we can, you know, code them. I know, you make, I know you're going to have the same firm, you might work with three different attorneys on three different types of issues. When I talk with Tom, he tells me, well, Shaughnessy doesn't cost us. Don't tell me he doesn't cost it. We pay a fee, and those fees are based on the, the level of use. And it, it, it costs us, in, even though in a different way. But you still have Diane Gorman, and you got it, yes, yes. all over the place. We spend, I think, an inordinate amount of money on legal fees. Yeah. We do. I, for those issues that I know about that the board has discussed, expect to pay some fees. And I would agree. Yes. I agree if there's an employee termination, if there's a potential lawsuit, if there's IEPs, there's no getting away from. I just, I'd like to know that we have a handle on it. I guess yeah. is the right word. Yeah. We spend a lot of money but on That's why I was the question. Just legal fees is the big catch all. What, You're what the kind of cat general categories are going to be discussed that the legal fees are being broken it, It's okay. one thing when you have negotiations and you've got three unions now, I'm assuming you don't have the fourth one yet, or maybe you will. But and all, all that factors in, and every time you say, oh, we'll call the lawyer's office, you know, make a decision, and if we have to call the lawyers, I guess I don't like to pick up the phone and call a lawyer every time I need to make a decision, number one. But there are circumstances where that does have to happen. Yeah. I understand that too. Yeah. I just think we spend a lot of money on lawyers. Okay. Well, I try to keep it down. Thank you. Um, Still not happy with that answer, but it's okay. <laughs> if you want to copy these bills, I will give you a copy of these bills. I, I'd be happy to come into the office and sit down with you on some of that stuff. Okay, absolutely. I would do that then. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll uh, set up a time to do not just just drop in on you all the time. I'd be happy to do it. So we, we've been talking about travel quite a bit, <clears throat> and we want to stick with meetings. So one of the questions that I have is, what is the current rules because we have a personnel meeting the next meeting we're going to be talking about a travel policy what is the current what is the current expectations of people in terms of timeliness in terms of when their receipts to be reimbursed or not uh, we are improving on that right now we are telling them we want them to uh, to turn in their mileage um, Oh, what was the date that was given to them? They should be doing it monthly. Yeah, I think it was monthly. Why, was this not timely? Uh, this covers three months. The one that I asked about in uh, yes. Memphis 14 went from July 29th to October 26th. I will talk to that individual. But if we have a policy that says all travel vouchers must be turned in. Tom had indicated that we're, we're doing something along those lines, but I don't know the specifics of it. That's but three I months, asked. unless there's extenuating circumstances, they should forfeit the fees if they can. They haven't got the time to turn it in. They obviously didn't have the time to make the logs. Is how, that's how, from an employer's standpoint, if you're not logging your time, if you're not doing it every week, logging in, making sure you're up to date, it should take you 10 minutes to turn it in at the end of the month or the, within the first week. That's what's normal procedures in private practice. Going back three months, after three months, 
forget about it. You shit, I don't want well, to. Well, this was, I mean, this, what started my French and the What started my uh, pet peeve on this, if you will, is for a, a large sum, four digits for travel expenses in a small district. And the answer was that covers 12 months worth. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And then it was followed two months later by an even bigger receipt. I remember that. But that bigger receipt it appears to be not appears to be the receipts are that it is um, for uh, reimbursement for school mm -hmm. courses. By the way, there's a disconnect in the dollars there because mm -hmm. the receipts are for fourteen forty and the the billing was for fourteen hundred, so it was probably forty bucks. You know, you're yeah. right. Long things we have spoken to her. So. In that know. particular instance, she's for this individual to do money based upon the receipts that I see. No, no, we're due money the other way around. She was paid fourteen forty and should have been fourteen hundred. Yes, no, no, three sixty, three sixty to seven twenty to see. Yeah, no, there was a mistake going the other way. Okay, okay, it was a mistake on our side where someone switched the digits. Oh, okay. Why would why would reimbursement for courses follow your travel? It might have been coded. I got to check that because there's there's a handwritten coding on the receipt, oh, yeah. okay. so it might have been putting yeah. it into the right account, but I don't know that. But my recollection was, and I had a chance to look it back up, was that it was originally identified as a travel expense, but I didn't check the actual coding to make sure that's what it was. Okay. Yeah, but it, but I think it's all related to their continuing education. There's stuff in their employment contract. Right, no, no, I understand that. And and um, I, I don't have a problem with reimbursing you because that is part of the contract. Mm -hmm. But again, why would it fall in travel? And do we well, still pay, now that we're not at, we being the SA who's not at the high school, if we get, now does Brian get a 3,000 Brian bonus? should not be, I don't believe Brian traveling? should be paying for travel from the district. Okay, I'm just curious. I, I don't know who has the, the travel stipend. I don't. I do not keep that in my head. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe I, that, that, that is going to be something that I'm going to have to wrap my head around shortly. I I can see it's coming. See that stuff falls into now that they have a union with the union schools. All the all the possibilities mm -hmm. or not. Anything else? The only other one that I asked a question about was the uh, uh, 3D. No, it's a biology. Bio, it's a print. bio printer. Yeah, they can literally print out. That's wicked cool. Biological and, and, materials like not mold but algae. It was like a nine thousand dollar expense, and I just asked, "Is there a grant for this? Can can I see the money coming in?" And I just sent the the, the demonstration of the money. Coming. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we literally received a grant letter and a check, um, which was I think it was part of the board documentation at, as you guys approved it. Yeah. So and oh, the check was there at the time of the approval, yeah. and we okay. just deposited it at that moment. Once you approved it, we deposited it. And that was the last the question. Yeah, that's the last question I had on fourteen. Okay. And I said yeah, that's the fourteen. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to the revolving funds. Um, I've got a couple of questions. It looks like we got a little bit of interest on two of them. Uh, the special ed and the capital improvement. Yes. Okay. And then on the facilities use, there was an expenditure of 20000 for software. Yes. Can you explain what that was for? Um, basically, we have a lot of machines that are on, on Windows 7, and this is going to be converting them to Windows 10 because at the end of this month, yeah. Windows 7 is no longer being um, supported. Yeah. So how does this work? Is this a fee that we pay one time for an upgrade or do we get a monthly fee, kind I, of like a recent thing? How, how does this particular one work? I, I think what it was is to pay for X number of licenses and that was the number that they had given us. So it was 20,000 for X number of machines. So I'm just doing this off the top of my head. Yeah. And and I believe this was a purchase that was approved back in June or May of last year. Okay. Um, it's in the year-to-date column. So we actually paid it a couple months ago. 
So it's really recent that we've actually paid them and they're, they're doing the rollout right now. Okay. And how do you know how many machines, do they just, uh, they base it on the existing license? Do, yeah. we, do we know that we need that many for? They're supposed to have a list by equipment as to what is on that piece of equipment. So for a laptop like this, they should have um, to know the license for the operating system, um, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, um, all, everything that's loaded on here, they need to know what's there. Yeah. So they're matching essentially what they have. Yes. Versus what we have. What do you mean? If, it, if there's a difference, I mean, if machines get, I mean, we, we've had drop in enrollments, I don't know if we're right. Oh, you know, I mean, the drop machines. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're, we're gonna have a, a different discussion about machines in the future. Okay. Because I, I have a feeling what we need to do is start rolling some of these over and just cutting them loose. Okay, great. Um, anybody else on these funds? Okay, um, okay budget reports. I, we just got this agenda that went out around noon today. Mm -hmm. I personally have not had a chance. I've looked at the health and dental and I've looked at the revenues, but I didn't have a chance to go through the voluminous <laughs> report on everything excluding health and dental. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Kenny. I just want to make sure it's clear in the minutes yeah. that you had said something you, you're asking to have the, uh, the minutes earlier, and I think it's clear well, the from agenda. You, the agenda earlier. Um, and I think it's clear that you want to have these monthly reports earlier, and I agree with you. I'm trying to work with the staff and making sure that these reports come out on the 10th of every single month, regardless of where, where they stand, okay. okay? So that you guys get it on time every single month. Um, I'm sorry that these are late. Okay. okay. Yeah. Just if we're gonna look at it, we really need a couple of days. You know, like the Friday before. Agreed. Um, I know you've discussed this before, Matt. This has to do with the revenue report. Yep. Amount remaining. Can you explain to me the neg the parentheses and the negatives versus the in my accounting, parentheses mean negative and no no other indication means positive. Okay. Or credit versus debit. All right. This system is spitting out information like a true accountant would see it. Okay. Basically, what it's saying is a negative is income, where a positive would be a loss. Okay. Negative numbers are credits that are revenues coming in. Mm -hmm. This is a revenue account that we're looking at. Yes. And positive numbers would be a charge. So, for example, if I'm understanding right, Matt, if I go down to the fifth line down, individual requires a preschool preschool budget is forty thousand. Actual has been forty nine four fifty. Yeah. So we have gotten in nine thousand four hundred fifty more in revenue than we budgeted. That's great. Okay. I'm I'm going to ask her to see if we can revert the numbers. Okay. So the 9450 debit is actually a surplus over what we budget. Is that correct? Wait a the 9450 yes. in amount remaining. Yes. Is a surplus. Yes. Over the actual budget amount. Correct. Okay. So, but, but the so the actual revenue. Okay. So when you're so it's if it's in parentheses, it's a credit, a revenue credit to the district. Yes. Okay. So the the nine thousand four fifty is a surplus on that debit. Yes. Okay. Over what over the actual over the actual budget, not necessarily over what was spent. This is yes, it's over the actual budget. Okay. Yep. 
if, if in fact that stayed, all those po those positives right now in the amount remaining is, is lowering the amount of revenue that you're still waiting for. So if all the amount of money that you were still waiting for to come in came in as budgeted, the only thing left at the end of the year would be that accumulation of positive numbers, and that would be the overage of excess cash that you have. Yes. Okay, so when you look at the bottom line of 18 million in that remaining column, $370,245.47. That is money that is still credited within the account. Oh, uh, that $18 million is what we're expecting to um, receive, okay? So in for the December report, it's gonna be much lower because I know what the actual assessments are gonna be for the, uh, the member towns, um, and so it, this is going to be a much finer report. Okay. Yeah, otherwise, you're at, another way of looking at it is quickly summarizing in your head so it's not exact. If it's about $100,000 worth of debt, it's only $100 million. Which means of the eighteen three seventy dollars that you're showing as an amount remaining, we originally budgeted eighteen four seventy dollars to still come in. But we've had people give us an extra $100,000 for some of these other categories. So we really only, really only need eighteen three seventy dollars to achieve our budget. Which would lead you, if everything yeah. came in as anticipated when that budget was created, yeah. exactly to the penny, you'd end the year with one hundred thousand dollars left over. Mm -hmm. okay. Like we we're gonna we deposited over twenty thousand dollars today in Lincoln Investments. I'm hoping sometime next week or the week after that we're gonna get eighty thousand dollars from Kingston. Okay, and if you look on the revenue report, which is like halfway down. Right now, I got a zero in there. Okay. Um, by the way, the budget column is going to get updated for the December report because it gets reconciled to the tax rate at that point. And so, we're going to, it's just the report is going to be much more quality next month. I'm just going to have your name showing up next because we got Jim Smalling, we got Alex Moore. Yeah, yeah, we're not getting that. Ka-ching, ka-ching, right? <laughs> okay, so. The bottom, the bottom numbers here, the 35 million, that's all the money that we expect for the, for the fiscal year, July 2019 through June 2020 in terms of revenues, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, so, and the amount remaining of 18,370,000 is money that we have not collected yet that is due us? Eighteen million, yes. Eighteen million three hundred seventy is what we have yet to collect. Okay, and that's coming in as we said. Yeah, well, if you look at the top four, those are pretty much guaranteed. Yeah. Those aren't the actual numbers. Those are the numbers that I started off the year estimating what I thought they would be. In December, and those we now, are tax revenues. Those are tax revenues. Okay. So. Say, for example, this was the December report and this is the actual um, reconciled number. Those top four, we're going to get those four, okay? And, yeah. I, and I, want to, I want to change how the system is recording it. I'd rather record the assessment to the member towns as a receivable as opposed to recording revenue when they actually make the payment. Mm -hmm. So that should, that should just show as zero as amount remaining because I'm going to get it, yeah. okay? Then... Um, Let's see, if you go down further, we're gonna get adequacy aid money. Uh, let's see, we got a big chunk in December. So that's gonna go down even more. Is that catastrophic aid? Uh, catastrophic aid is down farther. That's oh, kind of down. This is state, right? That's yeah. state money. Yeah. The, state, the state doles out a lot of money okay. in December, okay. okay? And we've received quite a bit of it, okay? Yeah. Um, school yeah. building yeah. aid should be pretty much cleared up. And then, um, and then the use of fund balance down below, I can I can make that so it shows it as revenue. Now this is showing <laughs> ninety thousand for Medicaid. I thought we were assured of that. Um, yeah. See, this was this is like my original estimate, okay. and then I I have to now update it to the amount that was approved on the MS twenty four and use this at the tax rate. Okay. Okay, which is going to be in the December report. All right. Okay. Use Thank of you. fund balance means what? Um, we're budgeting for net income loss. 
You didn't just throw that out there just to see if you were listening to me. <laughs> no, that's that's a, been a problem with the state. You know what, what what it is is we have say you have retained earnings, okay, and because we don't have any shareholders, you don't. How do you get? How are you going to give it back to the taxpayers? The only way that you give it back to the taxpayers is to lower your revenue estimate. Okay, so you're actually spending that money down. You're bringing in less revenue, but you're spending out 100%. Okay, so the use of fund balance is like budgeting for a net income loss. So you're spending the money you have in the bank without going to yes. the bank to get more money. Right, so it's good for governments to have a net income loss. So let me, let me restate that. I think that's confusing, particularly for people at home. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's true. We're not budgeting at a loss per se. Another way of stating that would be we're budgeting a dividend to our stakeholders. Yes. Yeah. So it's a return of money to stakeholders. So in a corporate environment, it would be that's the amount that we're planning on taking out of the retained earnings and giving to the shareholders in return for a dividend. Here it would be the amount that we are. Uh, not going to spend and are going to instead provide that as a quote unquote dividend to the stakeholders, which gets manifested by not having an $850,000 extra uh, tax. Yes. Okay. In this case, stakeholders are yeah. taxpayers. Stakeholders being taxpayers. Go ahead. Yeah. So a lower tax bill is their dividend. Right. Correct. Okay. Anything else on the phone? But in governmental reporting, it's reported on the budgetary basis of accounting as a revenue. <laughs> You're messing with us now. It's government. It's government. If government did, if, if corporate America did what government did, we'd have a I, lot more people we, behind we, bars. We'd be out of business. I, okay, I, I we would be out of four, business. Four basis of accounting that I have to manage. Right there. Okay. You have just accrual. I have accrual, cash, modified accrual, and budgetary. You sure you don't want some chocolates? <laughs> yeah, no, no. There's enough chocolate going around right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> I am not commenting. <laughs> okay, moving on to budget reports. Okay. Um, Again, I've had a chance to look at the health and dental summary and the revenues, but not the not the big report excluding health and dental. Has anybody had a chance to look at those? No. No. Okay. No. So, um, can before we jump into, are you going to jump into the budget adjustments? Yeah. I am a little surprised that three hundred three eight is in there because okay. that's kind of a placeholder. If you want to approve it, I'd be glad, but. I was, this is the money that's set aside to do the middle school transition. Yeah. Um, I'd rather do it near the end of the project, but I think it's important that you see it. This is what's set aside. Okay. 561. Yes. All right. Yeah. I, I did have a chance to look at this one. Um, if you don't need it approved tonight, then. I, I think it would be good right now to instead of asking you to, for full approval, is let's just make you aware of it, mm -hmm. okay? And um, wait until the project is done, and then move everything around. And when do you think that'll be? The project? Yeah. It's I'm gonna have to move everything around before June. Okay. Okay. Um, if you have to go along to it, I'm gonna get it for this year. So. Yeah. I mean, when you look at the detailed expenditure report, you're going to see I need to move money around for payroll. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that's coming up soon. So I got a lot of house cleaning to do because I'm planning out the year end right now. So this may not be in a, a form, the final form. What the? This, the reallocation. This yes, final right. Period? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm hoping to spend a lot less than what's here. What's here? This okay. is. This is his path to get what he thinks is worth. The okay. worst case and where he'll take it from. That's yeah. good. That's good. And with any luck, you can It'll still take work. it, not spend it all, and yeah. get more dividends. Sounds like a plan to me. Yeah. Okay. 
That's 3038. Yeah, 3042. Okay, this looks. Oh, I wish they gave more information on that. Yeah, other professional services. I, I knew what this was at that moment. But not right now. But not right now. Well, it looks like they're similar categories, except for the five. You know, it looks like to me, it looks like you're, 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 you're uh -huh. moving from a consultant or a third party payment into an in house management of $19,000 worth of. I agree with that. that. And as it looks like. No, no. I agree with you. I'm, I'm positive that's what it is. I'm going to ask you to not approve it tonight because there needs to be a narrative underneath. There should be, yeah. I, I, Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, your right. point is well taken. I'm really willing to do that. Um, We'd be more than happy to not approve that. Right. <laughs> and of course, the next one is the same thing. Is this something you do not want to approve tonight? Yeah, no, because there's no narrative underneath okay. it. Okay. This so is, we need to get I'm, them into the habit of doing a narrative that's requested. I know what it is, or I knew what it was at the time. Okay. Okay. So I apologize for that. That's a discipline item. Yeah. Not like punish people discipline. It's, it's a financial discipline. I mean, you got to get into the routine of Correct. properly. Okay. Can I can I share four things? Sure. I, I know I'm. We're moving beyond what's on the agenda. I have four things that are coming up. The first one is, as I already spoke tonight about impact fees, where Newton is paid and Kingston's coming shortly. So we're going to get about a, a hundred thousand dollars this year. Um, next year, this is just, this isn't money that we can all count on. Okay, it, it, we only receive it when the town's collected for a development. Okay, um, I'm going to be. I'm right now researching a security camera for the auditorium. We had a situation where someone was attacked in the auditorium and- um, An we, assault? Well, I don't know what the details are. Well, assault. Okay, assault. And I don't have a video of it. Okay. Okay. So- um, And where is this gonna be in the auditorium? Yes. And we're trying to figure out what kind of, um, what kind of camera it, it's gonna be and where it should be, um, how much of a field of view it should have, okay? And we're also looking at big cameras to, to, to stick them up around um, as deterrent for other activity, which is gonna be like the next topic. Okay. We had the camera issue come up a couple of years ago. Yes. And that auditorium sometimes is dark. These cameras have to be able to work in a low light. Yes. Yes. Or, but this was during an event. Okay. This was during the middle school play, and it was some adults in the auditorium that were allowed to be there. Okay. The adults were. Oh, okay, so we don't need to get into that. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Okay. Don't want to say another word. But I don't have video of what transpired. Okay. okay. But do you want? I mean, do you? Do you anticipate a need for these to work in a low light situation? We're right now, we're, I'm letting you know only because we're at the beginning of trying to figure out what we need yeah. and where we need it, okay? I would prefer to have like a 360 camera yeah. that that just records in a 360 degree field. Yeah, a fish eye kind of thing. Yeah, and put it right there at the top, right in front of the stage so it gets what's on the stage and it can also see out over the whole auditorium, yeah. all right? Um, I don't know what the pricing is for that. I know I looked at one in the um, for the parking lot, which we never did, and I think they're more expensive, but I want to be absolutely certain. But that has to be outdoors. That has to be a well, beefed up. Yeah. But we should take to the safety committee also. If there is adults involved in things like this, and we can identify who we need to not be lying on the process. Well, I was, I was going to suggest that maybe you contact Negro Chief Briggs and see if there's some grant money available to get some support for schools for Great idea. Uh, yeah. well, look. security purposes. Because yeah. if anyone knows it, it's, it'll be Don Briggs. I, mm -hmm. my, my, I'll put money on that one, on him in particular. 
will be very resourceful okay. that way. And there may be some used equipment that will work just fine for what we need to do. Um, also, I fired the uh, the vendor that did the um, did the cameras. Um, we had problems with our radios, and the radio's been out since August. And no matter how many times we tell the vendor we have a problem, they're like, "You have a problem? You know, they're they're not." <laughs> Hello. And we, we don't have a problem anymore. We have a new vendor. Okay. okay. Great. So how long the radio's been out for? August. Okay, I have two more things. Um, we have kids who are vaping in the elevators, and what I want to do, or elevator, what I want to do is I'm going to put a, uh, a card reader on the elevator, so you need to have a security badge in order to make the elevator work. Okay, I can make it so it turns off after school hours. Why don't you put a recording device in the elevator to catch them? The cost of putting a security device in the elevator, I mean, a, a camera in the elevator, more expensive than is because it has to move up and down and that. Yes. Can't yeah, just that, be the cable. Wires. I have to hire Otis to wire that cable so it doesn't impact the, uh, the up and down. It can't just be a wireless camera? I, get, I have to get a power. I, I, I'll look at a camera. Well, it shouldn't take much power to use a leg elevator, right? I will. Like Otis would have to wire that. Yeah. Okay. I will, uh, I'll look at a camera. We were thinking of a fake camera in the elevator. That's how I think now. Well, <laughs> I don't think that the kids are watching oh, the community yeah. meetings. Okay. You never know what they're watching. And then um, <laughs> the last thing is we're going after bid for yearbooks. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so yeah, that's a job for Ellie. I don't know. <laughs> I'd be happy to look at them. I don't know if I can. I no, no, I fresh my page counts. Yeah, just we want to make sure that this year they're following the policy that they right. are, uh, they're the people on the yearbook committee are getting the proper amount of ads to support the yearbook for changing the price tag on the yearbooks to fund their publication and collecting from advertisers when they when they promise. But that wasn't the issue last year. I think the issue last year was more we didn't ask enough advertisers to collect. Right. They didn't, and they didn't. They didn't. I right. could have given the list a decent amount of 25, 30 right. months of local businesses that have been around a long time and consistently have supported the schools. Yes. That's that's really what they did. They yeah. probably just don't think about it. So the meeting that you volunteered to have was in last year, but in maybe this year you've got something you're interested in? Or? I might be. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do it, yet, let me know. Yeah. Give me both of them. Yeah. Give me both of them. Because I, I, I mean, I'd be more than happy to come in. What I what I need to refresh myself on is how the page page count bumps up. But depending on the, if I have a newspaper, I can I can tell you I know it's an eight page bump. Yeah. You know, but it when it's reduced down, but eight pages could be a sixteen or thirty two. Yeah. Depending on the size of the page. Yeah. Because of the way it cuts on the machine, it's just. Is this one of these big uh, publishers that does thousands of schools or? Yes, it's not Jostin. Not. Right now we have Jostin. Uh, do we have the rep? Yes, we do. And and just so that you know, the school is happy with the current rep. Yep. It's just we're now up at the end of the contract. So we're going to just kind of send it out to bid. See what we get. So maybe maybe at the appropriate time, then we could have a phone call with the rep. And they, you can well, if he, if he or she comes into the school yeah, and they have to meet with Brian. Yeah. yeah. I, I will yeah, share with Brian that. that uh, I'd be interested in seeing you. Yeah. Right yeah, great. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. I'll still Anything check out else? my page count, though. No? Any public comment? <laughs> High up there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. My, uh, you don't even need my council tells me that we don't need a motion to adjourn. Chairman, can adjourn. Oh, really? Adjourn. Yes, I have a chief council in purple that informs me of these things. Uh, That's correct. All right. Meetings adjourned.